welcome to Public Exposure again. This is uh, Public Exposure Investigates the Foreclosure Crisis. I'm Stan Emmert, and what we're doing is a continuing series on the foreclosure crisis that exists in the United States, in the Puget Sound, in Washington State, all over the country today. There are some uh, opportunities for you to uh, get some additional information. It's actually on the Washington State Attorney General's website. We're going to get that up on the screen, and uh, be sure to go there. So we're going around the country. Let's go to the Boston Globe. Here is a, a, an article, uh, August the 26, 2011, faced with foreclosure for paying her mortgage early. This is an amazing story of a woman who knew that she was going to be into some financial straits coming down the road, and so she paid her mortgage early, several months early, and the bank didn't recognize it and then st wouldn't even receive any payments at all. Edgar Hall, attorney who deals with debtors and banks and things like that, my goodness, a bank can refuse to accept payments? There's times if uh, the promissory note and deed of trust, what most people refer to as a mortgage, you know, doesn't allow prepayment. That's one option. Two, if she prepaid and then um, didn't keep up something else, maybe an escrow, maybe a tax, maybe something else, which would push the, push the overall accounting backwards, it creates an accounting nightmare for a lot of their systems. They're just not equipped to handle it. And so, so because of an accounting nightmare, this woman is facing being evicted from her home. Possibly, yeah. Hmm, interesting. Uh, we talk about mortgages and, and this whole series, and this right here is the behind-the-scenes maneuvering of loans, the, right, right here on this segment. This whole series is about the foreclosure crisis. It seemed that even when the country was founded, there was a written piece of paper that was my mortgage and I had my signature on it and the bank signatures and whoever's was supposed to be on it just kind of like that right there that's not the case anymore is it not really why not well when uh, prior to a, a group called MERS mortgage electronic registration system coming online the way it worked was like in the inception of this country where each step of the way you had something being recorded so that anyone can go to that public record and say, oh, I know who, who owns this. I know who to put my, sell, you know, my offer to if I want to purchase it. Uh, you know who to tax. It was a good system. When MERS came online, it gets recorded once, and then it can be transferred many, many times before it ever comes back out. And so it's very difficult for homeowners, uh, county agents, anyone not part of the MERS system to know where it is. You know, interesting thing is that I heard of MERS a few years ago, and I thought it was being mispronounced. I thought it was the MRSA virus and it was a really, really <laughs> difficult virus. And it, and it comes out that, that it actually is kind of difficult. We've got the MERS website up and it actually is, is revealing on some things because this next slide is the owners of, of MERS. I mean, there's Chase, there's City Mortgage, there's HSBC, there's Fannie Mae, keep going. Uh, the, the next one, there's Stewart and Sun Trust and Nationwide, and Wells Fargo. These are the owners of MERS. And interestingly enough, Edgar, I got a bonus question for you. How many of the owners of MERS are also defendants in that FHFA lawsuit? <laughs> Probably most of them. Well, what is MERS and how does it work? Well, what MERS is, it's kind of like shorthand for the county registration systems. It's a database that tracks who owns it and it allows for very fast transfer. So mm -hmm. if you're on the stock exchange and you're trying to move something quickly, this keeps up. There, there are some benefits of MERS, which I can understand, but in terms of the common person, in terms of Main Street, it's a nightmare. Yeah. You, you don't know where things are. Let's actually go to the graphic that uh, we, we tried to create, a graphic that might kind of, here, here's a, like a black box, and, it's, and there's a slot and it says insert home loans here, and that happens to be MERS. And then it goes up to ABC Bank, but before you know it, it's gone off to all of these other banks, but not involved are county records. How come? Well, that's just the way the MERS system is set up. It uh, bypasses a lot of the costs, and when I say costs, that's why the, the creditors see that is, uh, instead of a benefit to the, the county, it's just a cost. And so uh, it, it's a very efficient system for the banks. But if I am I need to know if, if, let's say I'm buying the home, I need to know if I have clear title to it, and if I don't know who actually is the holder of, of the security, which is, you know, or holder of the note, which is secured by the house, do I not have some questions about that title? Well, that's the problem. Unless you actually shell out some money either to a title company that has access to the MERS database, or unless 
for some reason they've recorded it publicly and it's come out of the MERS system, a lot of times the homeowners are stuck and they, unless they do a QWR or a, some sort of legal request uh, of the bank through an existing legal process, there's no way for them to know. So this is why a homeowner, um, not just a homeowner, but just about anybody, if they're having anything to do with a real, uh, a real estate transaction today because of MERS, uh, they, need, they need to get a lawyer just to ask about anything. Well, a title company can, can often do that in the purchase and sale, so I don't know if you need to always an associate an attorney. But if there's ever questions about your accounting, any sort of issues, a boundary line dispute, anything else where it may somehow come into play, yeah, the homeowner's stuck a lot of times. And when we've, we showed that, that old mortgage, the way people you know, actually used to do it before, then every time that there was a transfer, then, then I mean, even if it was a transfer of the security to some other bank, then the county recorded it uh -huh. and they got a fee. Uh -huh. That's not happening anymore. Not so much. Here's county news. Uh, county recorders registered deeds were losing money to MERS. And this is governments, especially local governments, that are hurting. And this is uh, from a, a register itself. He says, I have a sworn duty to record, preserve, and protect the chain of title for all documents and a fiduciary duty to collect recording fees. And I feel MERS has undermined both of these duties. Is he, is he right? I absolutely agree. You know, when we're talking about fees, we're talking like 20 thirty dollars these are not extraordinary fees mm -hmm. these are just enough to get the county clerk to take the paper out record in the database and move on I mean they're very reasonable fees but they're also very necessary fees yeah. well I don't know anybody who took out a, a mortgage or maybe a refinance on their house and by the time their first payment was due they got a payment <laughs> book from somebody else is that is that MERS uh, not necessarily that's probably securitization of the individual loan meaning Whoever you got the loan from, they've already sold it to a much bigger organization. Wow, they've already sold the loan. Well, with that, we're going to be, be getting ready for our next segment. That's with Edgar Hall on Public Exposure's continuing investigation of the foreclosure crisis.